Srini, the host and co-founder of Blogcast FM, and I am here at Blog World with Mike Stelzner from Social Media Examiner. How's it going, Mike? Hey, Srini, I'm having an awesome time. Thanks for being on with the show today. Yeah, it's amazing here, isn't it? With all the people, all the amazing content creators, uh, and everything else that's going on here. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, the networking, I think, is really what's exciting, actually, for me a lot. Well, Mike, you actually have grown Social Media Examiner substantially in the last couple of years. I mean, the audience there is massive. Right. And I think people tend to look at you, and one of the things we all wonder is, you know, if I'm a new blogger getting started, what do I need to be thinking about if I want to get to where you're at or to that level? Well, you know, I think there's plenty of opportunity, first of all. So don't be scared. Like, when I started Social Media Examiner, I was like, oh my gosh, there are thousands of other bloggers out there blogging about social media. And frankly, they're smarter than me. And they're better than me. I didn't let that stop me. So I would say if you want to get into blogging, first of all, go where your passion is or go where an area where you see there's a hole. In my case with Social Media Examiner, what I noticed was that most people were not blogging the how-to details. And that was an opportunity for me to go in and have really deep content. And that differentiated us and that helped us grow. So I think that there's a lot of niches. And if you're a social media person or you're a blogging person and you want to blog about social media or blogging, there's incre incredible opportunities there. But you, got, you want to go deep into your niche. One of the things I remember you writing about in the book launch was the fact that you connected with all these influential people, that you had them become early contributors to Social Media Examiner, and nowadays everybody is clamoring for the attention of people like yourselves, people like Chris Brogan. How do you suggest the newbie blogger goes about connecting and developing relationships with these types of people, like people like yourselves? I think they should follow you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Because what you do is you go to people and you say, all right, I would like to interview you and you have engaging conversation with people and you draw things out of them. And we just had a passerby. <laughs> um, you draw things out of them and that's what makes it exciting for people like me because everybody wants something from me and, a lot of t and from the Chris Brogans of the world and what they do is they, they use it as a disguise. They say, I'd love to have coffee with you or I'd love to interview you and in reality it's a pitch fest where they're just gonna pitch what it is they have to do. But instead if you follow your model which is just have a conversation with people share what's in their head with your audience that's gonna help you stand out a lot with no objective no motive you never came back to me and said Mike can you help promote this you never came back to me and said Mike I've got something I want you to be part of um, that's just giving gifts and that's what I talk about in the book if you can try to figure out what these people these experts want and if they got a brand new book what they want is exposure and that's exactly how you and I met well, one other thing that you and I were talking about before we hit record here is I think one of the temptations that a lot of people have is to look at advice on sites like Social Media Examiner, sites like Copyblogger, and blindly just implement that advice to the letter, thinking that that is going to get them results. And sometimes they're left scratching their heads as to why. And one of the things I think is really important is adaptation and ad adapting that advice to your unique skill set. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I mean, the bottom line is that every person who creates how-to content is coming from a particular perspective. Like, for example, I just met a gal who has um, a, a concept about how to create a book out of your blog. So her whole concept is writing a blog post to ultimately write a book. So she's coming at it from, the, from a different perspective than someone like who's a consultant who's trying to demonstrate their expertise with the, and not give it all away with the hope that someone will hire them. So you just kind of got to take all of it in be a student of these experts that are out there and then kind of meld it all together in, into a style and into a way that works for you. At the, at the end of the day, you got to feel comfortable with these methods that you're learning and you have to kind of just pick and choose and as I think you said, amalgamate it all together into something that's going to really work for you. The good news is that in this era, we're in a very unique era right now where everything is freely available and you don't have to pay anybody. Frankly, most of the stuff that's in books has already been written for free on blog posts elsewhere. So if you have the time and you become a student of all this literature that's being created, you have an incredible opportunity to create something very unique for your situation. Well, that actually makes the perfect transition to my final question. You mentioned that so much of this is available for free. And part of what I've seen, and I always jokingly say the blogosphere is a bit like a developing country because you've got this severe in income disparity. You know, there's people who are doing really well, and then there's people who are really struggling, and then you've got kind of this little middle class. But based on the fact that everything is free, how do people find what that opportunity is to make revenue and to actually make a living doing this? You've got to have a strategy. 
and you can't just blindly go into anything, whether it be podcasting or whether it be video or whether it be blog posts, just because you want to be a producer of content. You need to have a strategy in place. Um, the old way of making money is sponsorships and advertising, and it works for some people. Um, but if you've already got a business in place, which is kind of the audience we're dealing with, um, figure out a way that this can somehow support your business objectives. For example, can it help grow an email subscriber list so that you can ultimately start selling more of your products to this permission-based group, you know, that you're, you're, you're dripping content to every day. So really, at the, at the grand scheme of things, you need to really set back with a pad and a paper and figure out how does this dwell into my strategy. And really, these things are really meant to not be the sole source of income for a business. They can be for a small business, but for bigger businesses, there really should be a marketing channel that supports some bigger objectives. Well, Mike, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. I really appreciate you sharing some of your insights. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me.